What's up? What's up, people? How y'all doing? I'm out here getting this workout. Wanted to touch base for a minute. I ain't been live in a second, but um, I just want to know is the is the love still there? And I want parents to chime in. I want coaches to chime in. Even athletes, I want you to chime in. Um, is that love still there? More so for the athlete playing the sport, right? We got a lot of athletes that have played in the summer. We got a lot that's probably not playing right now in the summer. And a lot of people talking about, you know, will sports go on even in the fall and the winter? As of right now, we know most basketball seasons probably won't start until January, um, maybe even later, if at all. So I just wanted to pose the question, is the love still there? You know, do your athletes still have the same love for the game now? In, in August as they had in March. You know, it's easy to love the game when, good morning. It's easy to love the game when, you know, you get to play every day. Um, you already know what's, what's gonna take place kind of from one weekend to the next. We really haven't had that. So, you know, I've heard, spoken with a lot of parents, a lot of coaches, there's a lot of frustration. A lot of uncertainty. I just wanted to come on here and talk to y'all. Exactly see, you know, what your thoughts were. You know, did your athletes still love the game? Has their love diminished a little bit? Um, how their eagerness to play decline? Um, or has it increased? You know, has this time got them to really, really appreciate and understand what the game of basketball can do? For them in its totality not just helping them get a scholarship but how it can help them deal with adversity how it can help them cope in certain times how it can help energize them how it can help them problem solve and just even manage as a person so that's what I wanted to see like you know where's your athlete at right now even where are you right now where are you and this discussion of it's hot out here too. Where are you in this discussion of, you know, the love for the game? You know, some people say, yeah, I still got it, still love it, but I mean, let's let's be honest. And unfortunately, a lot of parents may not want to have this conversation with the kids, but I implore you to. I really suggest that you have this conversation with your kids. Just find out where their mindset is as it relates to basketball still. You know, they may still love it and be all in, which is which is good, which is what we want. But they may also have some reservations um, over these last six months or so um, as to how they're feeling, you know. So it's okay to have that conversation with your athlete you know, what are you feeling as it relates to basketball right now? You know, getting ready to go back to school. And, you know, bottom line, a lot of athletes attend school, have good attendance, good grades because of basketball. So basketball is not over. But what has this time done for your athlete as it relates to basketball? That's what I want to know. Like, do they still love the game? Are they still passionate about the game? You know, you as a parent, as a coach, how do you feel about it? You know, is it more of importance, you know, to get their mind off just society, what's happening in the world? Is it less importance because there are more things? How you doing now? Because there's more things going on in the world. You know, what are your, what are your thoughts? Um, Feel free to type them in, type them in the chat, you know, um, even if there aren't any sports, let's say if there aren't any sports this year, let's just say basketball, there aren't any, bas no basketball season this year, but they don't even know what they're going to do about football, 
But if there's not, how does that, like what does that do to the, to the mindset, to the psyche of your student athlete? I'm not sure if y'all can hit my, hit my lady in the background talking. But so, you know, I just want to know because we inundate our students with well, our student athletes. Even, you know, this summer, it's been like play, 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 play. But have we really had a sit down conversation with them to, you know, check their feelings, see how they feel? Um, Greg, what up? I see you, my longtime buddy out there in Alaska. Um, like, what are their feelings? Let's let's start having meaningful conversations with our student athletes and let's really, really see what they think and what they feel. Because also when we talk about is the love still there, there are some coaches, some programs, some teams that would drive the love for the game out of their students. I was just talking with a neighbor of mine and we were just talking about how, like I've worked with all his kids before and they've played for coaches that have made his kids not love the game of basketball anymore. So there are circumstances that can cause our mindset to change. There are people that can cause our mindset to change. But at the end of the day, the athletes should be playing for them, and then they should be looking to use the game to play for somebody else. You know, they should be playing because I love to play the game. It does something for me. But I also like to play because it can help others take their mind off their problems. I like playing the game the right way. I like helping people, you know, entertain people when they see me. So it's a reason why they play. But they can't just play because other people want them to play. Does that make sense? And I think what's happened this summer is for the ones whose athletes have been playing, they've just been putting them in tournaments but not having these conversations. Then there are those that haven't even played, may just go to trainers, but they still may not be having those conversations. And then there are some that just haven't had any official real game-like situations. And so what's their mindset? You know, what are they thinking? Where are they at? And that's just kind of what I do, you know, going from a basketball coach to a athletic and educational consultant. I mean, this is what I do. We have to have these conversations to see what's, what's going on with them. Chris Williams say, I tried talking to my 12 year old son, but he doesn't open up to me as much as his mother. Yeah, no, you know, that's fine, Chris, but just to let him know that, you know, and this is not a parenting session because as a parent of three, I'm always looking to get better each and every day, but you know, at least you're having a conversation. At least you brought it up. You know, from my mind state, from my point of view, it would mean a lot to me if somebody even cared enough to ask me what's going on. How am I feeling? And I think that we're, we've, we've dropped that ball, right? Literally, we've dropped that ball because we're just thinking about them playing. But how do they feel right now? Because I'm pretty sure there may be some people that may be playing. Parents want them to play, but the kid may not. You know, but we don't want to drive the love of the game out of our student athletes. And I made a video, oh, let's say two weeks ago, if that, you know, just talking about, um, you know, like why are they playing, but also um, is it in them, right? Are they willing to continue to work on their craft? week in week out day in day out until they're ready to put it on full display so when you think of champions you know michael jordan had to wait seven years to keep putting his talents on display before he won a championship um other people you know wait longer right so you know you go to school you may wait four years to get that degree but do you stop studying no so even if there aren't any sports this year basketball let's say is your athlete willing to continue to work on their game? And I'm saying mentally, as well as physically, until they get to that point to where they can say, okay, now it's time to showcase it. So 
you know, I'm not here to tell you what to do with your kid. I just suggest that we have these conversations to see where their head is at. You know, if the love is still there, if the love is waning, you know, because kids are human too. Kids have feelings too. And we have to take their feelings and their thoughts into consideration. And again, when we talk about meaningful conversations, effective communication, you know, it'll do much more to them in terms of critical thinking, problem solving skills, effective communication, just understanding being authentic to their self um, and just to who they are. You know, if we do those things, at least it lets them know, hey, I'm a person too and I'm being thought of, you know, it matters to me, you know, it really matters to me how I feel. But if the adults don't care how I feel, then now I'm suppressing it. And then over the course of time, they're not talking, they're not communicating, but they're still, say, going to practice, going to train, going to play, whatever, and they're really not feeling it. And then their game decline, and then parents be like, hey, I don't know, really know what's going on with my kid. Well, your kid is probably adapting to the situation and not being their natural self in the situation. And so that's a whole different conversation, but we have to understand, you know, what's our athlete's strength, what's our student athlete's strength, what's our child's strength, um, and what are their limitations, and how can we play to their strengths so that they're walking in their strength each and every day. And so now when they get to the basketball court, it'll be that much easier. You know, we can't have our athletes, student athletes, children, whatever, you know, constantly in a state of adapting to situations so that they can fit in to where they're never authentically them, right? We never really get to see, okay, who's a true athlete? Who's a true basketball player? Who's a true person? Well, we really don't know because they've been adapting to what they think we want them to do. So I just implore you to have those conversations. Chris said he loved the game. We train to play every other day, and he enjoys it. When the training gets tough, he still pushes it and works hard. Yeah, no, that's you know that's that's good, Chris. You want him to, you know, to keep working, keep going. I'm just saying, have those conversations with him. You know, see how how he's feeling, what he's really feeling. You know, and a, and a lot of times, a lot of students, a lot of kids, mind sometimes the same way. They may not want to have those full in depth conversations with us because of what they think that we feel, right? That's what I mean by they are uh, uh, adapting to what they think we want as opposed to being who they are, you know? So because they, you know, won't say certain things, suppress certain things, um, they'll do what we want them to do, but it may not be to their full ability. And then again, because now they are adapting, they aren't able to really, really be as strong and as authentic as they can be, both on and off the court. So, you know, how y'all doing? You know, just something that I wanted to have that conversation with because, you know, so many people, I think now that are pushing agendas on our student athletes, you know, they're pushing the agendas I want them to do this, I want them to do that, but it's probably not what the athlete want. And as a parent, we know, again, it's not a parent exception, but as a parent, we know there are some things that's good for our student athletes or our kids that they don't know. So it's some things we have to have them do that they don't even think will work for them. But if we don't have those conversations to just see how they feel, um, and then to be able to help them understand, okay, well, this is who you are. This is when you're walking in your most authentic self and you're not being who you want for other people to think you are. That's when the magic happens on and off the court. We get so many players that, hey, my, you know, everybody else scoring, so I need to score. And that's not who they are, right? So they're not really able to be their best self on or off the court because again they are adapting 
to what everybody else want them to do. So as I'm walking out here in this sun, um, we got the rain last night, but I just wanted to ask that question, like, is the love still there? You know, really, really ask your kid, ask your student athlete, you know, talk to me about basketball. How do you feel? You know, what are you thinking? Let's have these conversations. You know, this is something that I'm gonna probably get together and put in place, maybe have a forum for our student athletes, but I wanted to come on here. I haven't touched base with this community in a while. And, um, um, you know, we're bringing, you know, finishing some more episodes of the show. But, um, yeah, I just don't want for athletes to get too far gone. And now, let's say, there is a season that that's good. But if there's not a season, I don't want to see now a lot of athletes who teeter, right? Because a lot of athletes teeter on being an athlete and being in the street. And if there are no sports and nobody has taken time to talk to them, they may only have one option. And that's to do things that they shouldn't do and be in places that they shouldn't be. Because again, they want to be adapting to what they think everybody else should be. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to drop that on y'all. You know, leave your remarks. You know, Chris, what uh, grade is your son in? Leave your comments down. Please feel free. You know, let's talk about it. Let's really, 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 really talk about it. Um, yeah, I'm here. I stay on for a second. I'll cut my music back on. If anybody got any questions, comments, concerns, drop them in here. Let me know. Let's talk about it. Do you think overall that athletes are becoming frustrated and or uncertain about the game? He's going to seventh grade. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. Chris, now you located where? You here in, you in Chicago, you in another state. And see, seventh grade is crucial, man. Not only, not only academically, right? Because this is where they build up the momentum for eighth grade so that now they can start to transition into high school. You know, this is when really, um, you know, and, and, and I have to be honest myself, a lot of times I was thinking, okay, well, you know, when they get a sophomore or whatever, but um, that's when it really gets serious. But even as a seventh grader, that's, um, okay, you on West VA, okay. He loves basketball, but he, he's falling away from football. Yep, and not falling away from football, that may be, you know, I mean, I'm not sure if that's because he's loving basketball more or if it's just, you know, it's football season or maybe didn't have time to play spring football I'm not sure but seventh grade and that's why I'm saying things start to change I'm not a proponent of you know kids specializing so early but once they get to about seventh grade seventh eighth grade they really need to start focusing and honing down on their skills you know what they really would like to do um, I encourage all athletes especially up until seventh grade play as many sports as you can because that'll help with fine motor skills, large motor skills, you know, all those things. Um, and that helps in other sports, you know, but right now sports is uncertain, but I don't want the physical aspect of sports to uproot the mentality of the actual athletes, if that makes sense. So yeah, Chris, man, had that conversation with him, you know, feel free to reach out to me. We just got done having our six week uh, Hoops Mastery Summer Intensive. Probably gonna start that back up um, in another couple weeks, you know, but uh, it's a great program, especially for him, you know, seventh grade to start to understand, you know, what transitions need to be made, what needs to happen. Uh, hey, hey. My wife just rolled up on me as I'm walking, uh, getting this good exercise in. So, yeah, he's played football, wrestling, basketball, baseball, track, 
Oh yeah, so he's an athlete, literally. He's he's literally a student athlete. So that's good, and that helps him work through other other things. You know, um, you know that track, that baseball, football, even wrestling. You know, so he's not afraid of contact. You know, these are things that I'm just thinking. You know, but we just want to make sure that our student athletes have the right mentality for whenever they're ready to get back on the court in competitive play. And we want to make sure that they're their best athlete. And I have a lot of student athletes getting on the court and just going crazy with shooting the ball or even overly uh, aggressive because they haven't played in a while. Um, you know, so these are just things. But if you have not, if you have not uh, watched my case study video, go check out my case study video. Um, because I really break down things to help parents save money on college by helping their student athletes get a college scholarship. And those things should start even as early as seventh grade, right? But in the video, I talk about three tips, three tips that help your kid if they're in the process of pursuing a scholarship or not. And it's really three myths that are out here when it comes to basketball. Because as I said, a lot of people have their own agendas and they aren't being forthcoming and open and honest with parents or student athletes because they want to get as much as they can get for them. Oftentimes it's never really a win-win situation. Like I'm gonna give you as much information that you need to help me, not all the information that you need to help you. Does that make sense? And so that's what we do, we provide the information and the consultation and the programs, coaching programs, so that the student athlete as well as the parent can get all that they need so that it can help them, not so that it can help us. Because we're not winning no games. We're not shooting no shots. We're just developing and pouring into the mindset of those individuals that we work with. So you can go check out that case study video at B2BSD hoopsmastery.com ruthie what up what up ruthie that's my sister there y'all uh, my, my bro don wilson doing big things so you can check out my case study video at b2bsd hoopsmastery.com um you know or feel free to reach out to me actually if you go to b2bsd hoopsmastery.com that'll get you on my mailing list um you can also go check out my website at carvelbailey.com simple easy carvelbailey.com but definitely let's start thinking about the mentality and the mind state of our student athletes um you know our students as well but definitely our student athletes because you know when this is a little bit more under control and things get back to um being populous right being density a little bit i don't want to say normal because things may not go back to normal as we know them but when things open up and start happening we want to make sure that our students our student athletes but our youth have the right mindset to be able to deal with all these things so is the case study on your facebook page no it's not um but he's leaning towards basketball I'm interested in that program, send me the information. Yeah, so you know what you can do, uh, Chris? So you can go to, see if I can type it in the chat. You can go to b2bsdhoopsmastery.com, right? That's the case study. Um, and uh, DM me actually as soon as we get done with with this DM me your email address and um, I will get you actually let me see if I can type it in some information so you can go see about our summer program we just have to update it because we just finished um, Thursday just finished last week um yep there you go summer school so 
That'll tell you about the program that we did for the summer. Chris and then we're about to start it back again in the uh, in about a week or so. So you can definitely go there and get that information. Um, you may even still be able to register there. We just have to change the dates. But again, it, it went six weeks in the summer. We'll probably go four to six weeks um, again in the fall and just keep it going. But uh, oh, no problem, Chris, no problem. I appreciate you, man, for interacting um, and caring enough about your student athletes to even, you know, get this information. So I don't really do the Q&As often. I'm going to start doing them more. But, uh, yeah, I hope it helped you, man. I appreciate you. Steve, what up, Steve-O? So, yeah, that's about it, man. I'm almost done with my walk. Uh, get this 5K in. Try to do it daily or get some other exercise. This kind of helps with my mindset, too understanding so i can continue to be my authentic self so uh just stay plugged in stay plugged in be on the lookout and if this made sense to you this video made sense share it share it let other people hear it let other people start thinking about it um so that you know because life is more than just basketball right as i always talk about understanding life through the game of basketball well once we understand the game of basketball in its entirety, in its totality, and what it can do for us, both on and off the court, then it really helps us to be better in life. So um, if you think that this helps somebody, then share it with them and you know, stay plugged in. And I'll talk to y'all a little bit later. Peace.